explain what the hell we're doing. <laughs> hey, it's Shira with What's Trending from MIP TV. Right now with Veritasium. Derek, what's going on? Not a heck of a lot. I <laughs> am enjoying this TV conference, and I don't really make TV. It, well, well, that's interesting. So why are you here? That is a great question, <laughs> no. Shira. I'm trying to figure that out. No. It's funny that you mentioned, though, Come I on. actually do have a documentary coming out on PBS. It's coming out in July. It's all about uh, radioactive stuff, uranium uh, and all that sort of stuff. The bomb, Marie Curie, Albert Einstein, Fukushima, Chernobyl. Holy mother. All of that packed into one massive documentary, two hours on PBS this July. Wow. Yeah. You said that really quickly, really well. You're a promo machine. Thank you very much. But you could say even though you're not in TV, content is content. It's all coming together. That's right. Well, I think what's happening is everyone's going to end up on the digital side, and that's happening sooner uh, rather than later. And, and did you think you were going to be in the place you are in right now where you are a video creator, you have your own brand? I always wanted to make videos yeah. when I was a kid, um, but it was funny. I, I couldn't imagine a world in which the kind of video creation that I wanted to do was possible. You know, to me, it always felt like you had to either make it big, like be famous, be on TV, be, yeah. uh, you know, making feature films, or you'd be nothing. You'd be making commercials or, or rubbish like that. And what's interesting is like the career that I've wanted has become a possibility in the last 10 years. You know, to be a YouTube creator is a thing that a lot of people are doing and, also, and it's really exciting. Yeah, also a niche um, that's different. You know, there's a lot of comedy and music on YouTube that does very well. Um, but being able to do education in science. Yeah, yeah. So I'm really thankful that I did those early degrees in like engineering and physics and then a PhD in physics. I mean, that was kind of a backup plan for me. It was like, you know, use your brain, uh, you know. And, Have and an science, education, kids. Science, science is amazingly exciting. I mean, so much about the world is exciting and I feel like uh, science is the way to figure that out, to figure out what's going on and really get some answers. Yeah. And now that I have that background, now I just want to share that with everyone. Well, so, you're, so you're proving so education is important because you wouldn't be doing this if you didn't have a PhD. But however, you also might be replacing teachers by what you do. I don't think I'm replacing school. teachers. And in fact, I've talked about this subject. I made a video about uh, this will revolutionize education. Yeah. It's the title of the video. And uh, it's about the... the Ever since like the year 1905, people have been saying this technology is going to totally change education. It's going to replace teachers. For example, uh, Edison said that textbooks would be completely replaced by the motion picture. Mm -hmm. It was way back in the invention of the motion picture. Has that happened? No, we still use textbooks. Why? Because they're still incredibly effective. And you may play a video in class, but there's still teachers talking to students. You know, people thought that radios would replace teachers or TVs would replace teachers. And they all, like, these things were tried. But there's something about education which is not just about dumping content on people. Of course. It's about making a social interaction between people. And I think that's why teachers will always be there and always be important because the kids need them. They need to feel responsible to someone. They need to feel like someone's looking after them. And so you, they, can't, you, they can't think that you're looking after them because you're not I don't, I don't look after them. <laughs> I'm making, like, I will not look after look, you. Look, like a million people watch the video. I'm not looking after all of you. I'm making something which I hope you enjoy. But if you want to do some more like formal learning, you got to have someone there who's sort of like your mentor. Okay. You're, yeah. You know. That's that's good advice for young people watching and old. How what's the process of how you create what you create? Okay, so I find something that I find is fascinating. Yeah. And then I just try to explain it so that like you would understand or like anyone would understand mm -hmm. and and would actually be like, "Whoa." And then they'd want to tell their friends about it because when you make a video like that, then everyone shares it with their friends and then it does really well on the internet. But you also, you have to be in people's faces, like you're cutting and all that. Yeah. It's not yeah, just gotta, like a boring talking head. Yeah, well that's right. You want to present it in a way that you would want to watch it. Like I don't want to watch something that's boring, and but like sometimes you're not the best judge, but I try to be a better and better judge. I try to lead with something awesome. Like in the first five seconds, five, first five to 10 seconds, if I've got something awesome in the video, I want people to see it right up the front. This is when I, I, there, I made this like, uh, there was a speaker which was like playing fire. Yeah, go for it. Whoa! <laughs> And I was like, what should I start the video with? Like, should I start it with the interview part? And I was like, no. We start it when he turns on the fire speaker and it goes like. So you grab people's attention for exactly. the first five exactly. seconds. Exactly. So it's like so kids like, oh, what's going to happen? Like, boom. And then he sticks around to hear like what the heck we're doing, why that works and how it works. So we need to start this interview off. Use this part to just start it off. We need something, something like, right. <gasps> Boom. <laughs> How right, was that? We're, no, we're gonna use that actually. That's you perfect. That. that was amazing. <laughs> There's a lot of misleading information on the internet and people that we look up to that say things, memes, and with Facebook and all this stuff. So, like, w what do you feel like 
your role is in all that in in telling people the truth. Yeah. And, and and how do we get, I guess, more people to debunk these things? Yeah. Um, there's a quote that I love, which I feel is like the guiding light for my channel. It's a quote by Richard Feynman, and it says, the first principle, he's talking about science, but he says, the first principle is that you must not fool yourself, and you are the easiest person to fool. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to fool yourself. And that's all over the internet. People fooling themselves everywhere. And so it's my job to get in there and figure out how to convince them otherwise. You know, um, I've talked about things like climate change. I thought everyone on the internet was on the same page. Like we get that it's kind of a thing and we should probably do something about it. Um, but when I made a simple video about it, I, I actually made a video called climate change is boring because that's how I feel about it. It's like, this thing that like, it's totally clear what's going on and what we need to do. And yet we're not doing anything. And that is a boring situation. Climate change is like Armageddon. Just instead of a giant earth crushing asteroid, it's slightly more of a invisible odorless gas. And instead of the imminent destruction of the planet, it's a gradual warming over decades. It's boring for me to even talk about it, right? But, but when I put that video out there, I found that there were a lot of people who weren't on the same page with me. Yeah. And I was like, well, crap, I really need to do more, <laughs> more like, you know, backtracking and like, let's, let's take this from the top. Okay, you think that volcanoes emit more CO2 than humans do. No, no, no. It is just, it is just false, false, false. But people who don't investigate think that it's true because volcanoes are big. Yeah, even when the biggest ones go off, it's like 0.25% of human emissions that year, like I'm when Mount Pinatubo erupted. <laughs> are you with me? <laughs> yes, Like volcanoes, volcanoes do emit some CO2, but it's nothing compared to what we do. Even when they go erupt massive time, like when the Icelandic volcano is going off, it's nothing compared to what we do. And it drives me crazy, so I feel like I have to get out there and tell people, because like even I talk to my dad, my dad's like, Derek, I, I just don't know about this global warming thing. Like, it seems like the globe is warming. My dad is not uh, an Italian mobster, <laughs> but, but, uh, but, but like, even my dad was like, there's just, uh, there's so much information. People say this, people say that. How do I know uh, what to believe? Exactly. And that, that's why you come to me. And the channel is called Veritasium. Uh, is truth is in the name, and that's what I try to bring. With uh, so much silly stuff on the web, you know, there's people could get easy clicks and views through whether it be like pop culture, entertainment, like celebrities doing weird things on late night shows these days, or cute animals, and I don't know. This Vine Star is like, why do you think a channel like yours and what you do um, is able to get attention? And I think that also uh, also proves that there's an audience out there that wants deeper stuff. Yeah, I think there's a real shift in society that's yeah. happening. I think that now that information is more available it's less okay to be an ignorant idiot. And there's actually something good about knowing the way the world works. What should we be taking notice of in the world right now, in science and culture? Ooh, that's such a tough question. Space travel, space living. I think that's, that's a good one. Thank you for throwing me that bone. Because um, I'm, look, the Hyperloop. One thing I'm excited about is electric cars right now. Yeah. I feel like that's going to be the thing. Next five years, electric cars are going big. Mm -hmm. You heard it here, maybe last, because <laughs> people know about that. But but seriously, electric cars going big. And also space travel. I love everything that Elon Musk is doing. I think there's going to be a big announcement coming out at the end of this month, which may be about battery packs in your house, taking you off the grid and changing the whole equation about energy distribution and storage. I know that sounds a little bit dull, but what if it means the end of like centralized power production at coal-fired yeah, plants? Amazing, and yeah. like everyone with having solar panels on their roofs because the, the cost is coming down that to me is so exciting like everyone becoming independent and the yeah and lastly advice for creators that want to start channel like you yeah if you want to start a channel a science channel you really have to start and then keep to keep going and i've learn, made a video about this read yeah be educated yeah well of course being educated is really important but like you don't have to be formally educated yeah. you just have to be educate really yourself. yeah really persistent with your research and and really um uh, I, I think the point is that you have to improve a lot. Like, I didn't start out as capable as I am now, and probably in a year or two I'll be more capable than I am at the moment. So it's it's all about focusing on your own progress and making sure you keep getting better. Cool. Veritasium, thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Thank Once you. Once again, guys, got to like, subscribe, comment. <laughs> I feel like I get into this, like, schmoozy schmooze mode. Let's do it. Let's do it. Schmoozy schmooze. Schmoozy schmooze. Subscribe to you. Subscribe to you. Subscribe to you.